Hi there, we're Equality 5, and our members are Ava, Aliana, Elena, and Elaine. Welcome to our presentation. So, for the mission statement, the goal of our project is to educate how to mitigate the damage of flooding for Cambridge residents, specifically for Cambridge renters. Our project wants to give insight on easy, accessible, and inexpensive ways to reduce the harm to homes and valuables, as well as how to educate um, how flooding is a big issue in our city. Our name is Equality 5 because it combines water, this year's theme for local through Aqua, and the importance of equality, so equal rights, opportunities, environmental justice, etc. Together, it's equality. Also, we have to have five amazing people in our group, hence the number five. A lot of people know how to react in a fire, but not in a flood, so we wanted to change that so that people know how they can protect themselves in both situations. This is a video we made during the summer. Hello, we are Quality 5, a group of Cambridge High School students whose purpose is to raise awareness about flood risk in Cambridge. In 2010, there was a really severe flood that caused a lot of damage to homes, roads, and businesses. We hope we can teach Cambridge residents something so that they can be a little less damaged the next time there's a big flood. We've done a lot of research about flood damage prevention, and we want to share it with you. This video has a few simple tips to help you prepare for flooding in the future and how to deal with flooding when it happens. This is Marina. She is new to Cambridge and lives in the Alewife neighborhood. This weekend, she came home and discovered her apartment was flooded. She wasn't sure what to do. Her first call was to her property manager. In most cases, a property manager will assess the damages, call necessary professionals like plumbers, and make repairs. While the basement is still flooded, Rena should stay out of the basement because flood water can contain harmful bacteria. If she must go into her basement, she should wear rubber boots and gloves, and also avoid touching electrical wires and fixtures due to the risk of electric shock. When it's safe, Marina sets up fans and dehumidifiers. These help her dry out her basement. She also disposes of items damaged by flood water. Finally, she and her landlord create a plan for future floods. This includes elevating appliances, using clear plastic bins for safe storage, and turning off electricity at the breaker before a flood. Now she feels much more prepared the next time a flood occurs. Marina is not the only person dealing with flooding. Clifford is a resident of Cambridge, renting a house in Cambridgeport with his dog, Big Red. Clifford notices that whenever it rains, the streets outside his house are swamped. He wanted to find out why, so he did some research. He found out that Cambridge and Cambridgeport specifically are really vulnerable to flooding. He did some research about what he can do to make a difference. Here's what he discovered. Having grass and green space in your yard helps absorb rainwater, so it goes into the ground and not into the roads. Keeping gutters and storm drains free of leaves and debris helps rainwater flow away from buildings and into the drainage system. This means it won't collect in streets and basements. Clifford also decides to invest in some rain barrels. Rain barrels are large metal barrels that collect rainwater that can later be repurposed. This water can be used for things like watering a garden or washing a car. The next day, Clifford calls his landlord to talk about flooding. They discuss water damage policies, installing a sump pump, and all the other things they can do to prevent flood damage in their building. This is very helpful for him, and he feels like he's learned a lot. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you learned something about flooding and feel a little more prepared. So uh, my name is Ava, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about our blue bike posters, which are one of our current projects. So um, we decided to kind of get the word out about flooding and how and Cambridge's flood prevention resources. We we're going to make some blue bike advertisements. So there are blue bike stations all across the city, and we decided to put ours in areas affected by flooding, uh, specifically in Cambridgeport near um, MIT. So we we made some like posters that are pretty quick and simple to read, um, pretty accessible for anyone, regardless of how, how much prior knowledge I have about flooding. And you can read quickly on your commute to learn some really quick and simple facts about flooding. So the topics we're gonna cover are three things you can do to prepare for a flood, 
what areas are most at risk of flooding and uh, what you can do to prevent flooding and resources like this city flood map that Cambridge already has. So those are gonna be out this summer. So look out for them whenever you're getting your next blue bike. Hey, I'm Aliana, and another large component of our group is social media. So we wanted to use Instagram as a platform to share our blogs, bus advertisements, and updates, facts, stats about flooding in Cambridge, because we thought Instagram is a great way to connect with organizations, people, and learn a lot of new information, which is why we thought it would be a good platform to use. Also, we can reach, reach a lot of people and advertise our website on there too. And then also echoing what was said before, talking about the tips and tricks on how to mitigate the damages of flooding. So our social media is at underscore equality five, and we would definitely recommend you follow and then tell your peers, your friends, your family members, uh, coworkers, anybody to follow our account to go on a journey and to learn. Hi, my name is Alina, and to circle back to our mission statement and to echo what Aliana said, in two words, our goal with Equality 5 is to spread awareness. Awareness about flooding, about how common and damaging a problem it is, and about how relevant of a risk it poses uh, to our community. And as young people, and just looking at this tech revolution that we live in, social media and awareness spreading go hand in hand. So in terms of actually creating content for social media, we've aimed to prioritize easy to read modern graphics when graphic designing. And we use the platform Canva to, de to design posts. And so here is a super quick portfolio presentation of content our team has created. This is a social media thread and some of the thread pages about um, how to mitigate flooding. This was a poster about six flood water observing plants because of course plants are just a great uh, instrument of flood mitigation. They work, they observe the water and they are, are um, environmentally friendly and sustainable. This is five fascinating flood fun facts. Um, this was our first post on the Instagram. And this is flooding by the numbers. And you can see right here, it just, again, illustrates how big of a problem flooding is. I mean, 98% of American basements will experience some form of water damage eventually. The, um, I think when you look at the numbers, the, the problem is quite evident. Um, and so these are just, these have been just a few posts of the many that our group has been working on. And of course, since creating this presentation, uh, our social media content has only grown. And I think I can speak for a lot of my team members when I say that we're really proud of what we've been able to accomplish so far regarding social media and motivated to create more, design more in the future. Of course, before the age of social media, there was and um, is journalism. And journalism, namely writing blogs and articles, have been extremely effective mediums that allow us to go more into detail about flooding, as well as to create articles that are about flooding, yes, but not necessarily about flood mitigation or control. We'll get more into examples of such articles in a second, but our aim in creating a variety of flood-related content is to present flooding as an intriguing and dynamic topic. Because let's be honest, you think of flooding and interesting and dynamic might be the last words that come to mind. We've tried to change this perception because activism begins with interest and interest is exactly what we've tried to generate. So one of my favorite projects I've worked on in Equality 5 has been the Floods of History series, which has included profiles and articles on the Central China Floods of 1931, called the deadliest of all time, and rightfully so, uh, the Great Boston Molasses Flood of 1919. I did a series of uh, flooding in mythology and religion, and I just loved researching uh, all these cultural flood-related stories so much, I made a part two. Um, and then outside of the series for the holiday season, I made a blog article about flood related gifts, um, as well as an article about different types of flood and an article about that relationship between climate change and flooding and about why uh, as humans we are, we seek for ways to kind of deny it. 
So a very interesting article. Um, and I can't stress enough how much I've loved writing these blogs and how much they've developed and improved my writing skills. And of course, I've got to learn so much about all things flood related in the process. Also, since creating this uh, presentation, we've added six more blogs to our collection, um, ranging from topics such as China's sponge cities to flood mitigation during the medieval period. Um, but now I'm going to invite all of my wonderful group members to share what blogs they've worked on. Um, I've seen a few of them in our shared folder and they're incredible. So good. So get excited for that. Um, okay, so it's kind of hard to pick a favorite because they're all really good. But I think one of my favorite ones that I've done is like um, flooding in like historic buildings because like um, I live in like a historic type of neighborhood. All the buildings are pretty old. So um, it was really interesting doing that research. And it was kind of a niche topic, but um, I loved like the old documents and it was really interesting. One, I think, uh, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, I think the favorite one that I did was when I interviewed my landlord because I'm a Cambridge renter and I did not realize how big the flooding was an issue and it was a really good conversation we had and I learned a lot about how she had really considered flooding when purchasing um, the apartment and how much she actually had planned. I didn't realize that she had taken that much into consideration and that um, flooding was such a big impact for renters and landlords in Cambridge. So I thought that was super cool. Yeah, and one of my favorite blogs that I worked on was, it was talking about the impacts of flooding, you know, economic, social, health impacts to be exact, and how it can lead to diseases which are unsafe to the environment and also the human body and damages which cause people and communities to invest more money in fixing you know, structures or items lost. Uh, and also the blog was talking about the environmental racism component and how flooding disproportionately affects BIPOC people and we, how we also can see this in places like Cambridge as well. So that was definitely really important to work on and I was glad that I had the opportunity. Yeah, I think um, our articles, they give us a place to talk about a lot of different issues. And again, present flooding through its intersections with other issues um, and through, I guess, in a lens that really illustrates the depth of its impact and uh, what it does to, communi to communities. So this is talking about our future. Where can Equality 5 go next? We have some amazing ideas that I would love to dive into. One being outreach through community events, a component that we have been missing um, due to COVID-19 and making sure that we follow safety protocols. And an example of the future when things start to get a little bit better is um, using Starlight Square which is a community place where people can interact and learn and see people's talents and so on and so forth. Also collaborating with other organizations focused on flooding and the impacts it has on residents because something our group really values is learning from the experts and other people um, because there's just some things that we don't know and that's okay. Also interviewing flood and climate change experts and featuring them on our website to hear the knowledge that they have been learning and spread it within our residents and people, our inner circles and also outer circles like school, for instance. Lastly, creating spaces on Zoom where our community members can learn tips and tricks on how to mitigate the damages of flooding just in case we wanna have that personal connection and we can't go outside like Starlight Square instead to create a safe place on Zoom where people can just learn and making sure that we can advocate for our advertisements to be seen and spread awareness through communities. And that is it for our presentation. Uh, we hope that you are interested in our project. And again, we've just loved 
this opportunity to talk about what we've done and where we're going.